Hi, and welcome back to Permission Evangelism. I'm bringing you today what will be the last of the series, and we have worked our way through all the other segments in this series concerning our method of evangelization by permission. And of course, we started out with the idea that there would be confrontational evangelism, which isn't very productive and it doesn't always work so well, but permission evangelism is us gaining a place of trust through relationships that later afford us the opportunity to pray with people to know Christ and for them to be redeemed, for their names to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that ultimately is our agenda. Our objective is to love people with the love of Christ so that they might come to the knowledge of Christ and be saved, that they can know the same Jesus that we have met. And so we do this by declaring two basic things as we've covered. One is our testimony. How did we come to the knowledge of Christ? And secondly is the knowledge of Christ itself. That is the narrative of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And the last time we were together, we finished off looking at overcoming timidity and how there's always these barriers of fear. And we dealt with even spiritual forces that try to stop us. But we know that according to Romans 1.16, we say what Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It is our power, and when we declare it, it is power. Now today we want to go on to what is referred to as the three most wanted list. So in this section, we think of three people that, that we want to help become followers of Christ. Write their names on a list. Maybe it's um, Daniel and Bertha and John. Daniel, Bertha, and John are three people that you know in your life. They might be friends, colleagues. You could also put on your three most wanted list someone in your family. And you might think, well, why would I want to make a three most wanted list? Why can't I simply uh, be reaching out to everyone? Of course, you can reach out to everyone, but I find that it's a matter of focus. When you come up with a list of very specific people that you want to interact with, you tend to be more focused, especially when it comes to the prayers that you make for them, your intercession, and what you do. So we're going to talk about that in this lesson, being focused, concentrated. Sometimes we are so spread out. Sometimes we are so concerned with such a mass that we miss the individuals. But the old proverb in the Vedic passages of, of the Hindus is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. It's true. Step by step, one bite at a time, you can make a difference in this world. One soul at a time. And we've already been talking about the one in this series, but now we're going to talk about the three most wanted. Now, these also are a category of three of the one or the individual or individuals in this case that you feel God is drawing you to. So think of three people right now, just right now, right where you're Think, If you had to put three people down on a piece of paper on a list that you want to see come to Christ, these aren't people in distant lands. These aren't people in politics or in movies that you can't access. I'm talking about people that you have a social connection with in some way that you know that you can have dialogue with them. Think of three of those people. And the first thing you do after you have these three people written down is you pray some preliminary prayers before sharing the gospel with these people. People And of course, we covered some of this already, but we're going to talk about it again because prayer is such a powerful part of permission evangelism. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, The God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So we ask God, what? To open their eyes ears and hearts to prepare them and to, to hear this message we're going to share with them. And as you speak to them, be sure to stress that the only way to the Father is Jesus. Now, this should always be bathed in prayer. So we're asking God to open their eyes. We're asking God to open their ears. As I prayed in Mexico and planting the church there, I ask God to shake the people and make them know that they need God. Ask God, as I prayed for my brother, to see Jesus in his dreams, for Jesus to visit him in his dreams, and he did so. Ask God to cause them to read the signs of the times. Ask them 
uh, ask God to cause them to feel conviction. See, it's the Father in heaven who reveals it to man. So we need to appeal to the Father, begging him in prayer for the three people on our list. God, please open their eyes, ears, and hearts. Prepare them to hear the message that I'm going to share with them. I think back on Nehemiah when he was about to speak to the king, and he asked God to give him favor. That's what we need to ask the Lord. Ask God to give us favor with people with whom we are sharing. And these are the people on our list. Look at John chapter 14 and verse 6, where it says that Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We know that Jesus is the path. And as we're praying, we're asking that these three, three things. We know the Father is in heaven, that He's the one that reveals, but He reveals the Son. And He can reveal the Son through us in, in both our testimony and our recitation of the gospel or the narrative of the work of Jesus and the cross. So we're asking God, open their eyes, ears, their hearts to hear the gospel of Jesus through my mouth. I Lord, need to cause them to take the only way there is, the way of Jesus. And we see another scripture here where it says that in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? See, at that point, we help them to understand that acceptance of Jesus ensures victory over death, that they can have never-ending life. And so this is all a part of our prayer. This is all a part of our preparation beforehand. We think of these three people. We write their names down. If you're like me, you will write them down. You may even have a picture of them. I would put a picture in my computer with maybe a case file with each person, as much information as we know naturally. In this day and age, believe me, you can find out a lot about someone just by going to Facebook. You can find out what they believe, what they do, what they eat, how they think. All of it is there. You can pray through Facebook. You can go through and read the descriptions in the about category, that individual. You can read the descriptions in every comment that they make and the statements that they declare on their timeline. And you can intercede according to the Lord, open their eyes to see, because we know that the God of this world has blinded them. So that's what we must do. We pray for them. We ask for God's mercy on their behalf. They can't ask for mercy for themselves. They don't know how to do that. And next, as we're doing this, we once again talk about the fact that we are building dynamic spiritual relationships with our most wanted. So now these three people on the list are also those with whom we are trying to develop this relationship. These are the ones that we are using the EIEIO method with, encircling and inviting them into and enlisting them, all those things. You know, in, in, in fact, that is one person at a time, but three, because we don't have to just focus on one. We'll try three people and approach each of them. And so during the time, it takes to bring those on your list to a life that is fully committed to Christ. It's extremely important to build a dynamic spiritual relationship with them. So we see five effective ways to do that. How do we build this relationship? Intercede for them, which we've already covered intensely here, that we pray daily for opportunities to meet them and for appropriate circumstances to talk with them about our life in Christ, pray that they will open their hearts to Christ. Intercession must continue. And that's what you have in this three most wanted list are three people that you're praying for. And one might come to Christ. I will say this, if one comes to Christ, then you can replace that one with a different one. But it'd be nice to have three primary goals in your soul winning. After you pray for them, you value them. Invite them to a social event. They need to see you and other Christians interact in social away from church environments. Uh, make them a part of your life. Invite them into the things you do in life. A real friendship, you understand. Not just a superfluous interaction with them, but a deep friendship before they even come to Christ. Or if they even never come to Christ, 
you will have been a neighbor to them. You will love your neighbor as yourself. What is neighbor? Neighbor is the one close to you, within proximity to you. People with whom you have access to their life that you can relate to. You value all of the people. Love and do good to all men, especially those of the household of faith. But here we are valuing these people as believers, showing them. And they might not respond right away, but these people on your list will feel valued by you when you do it genuinely and you serve them. So we meet an obvious need in their life. What do they need? What can we do to help them? And, and believe me, nothing is too small. This can be picking up something at the grocery for them while you're going to season. This can be providing for them one of their favorite things, whatever it is, a food item. Maybe you go to a certain shop that has certain biscuits or cookies or cakes or pies that you have heard them say they like. Get it for them as a surprise. Find out if there's something you can do to help them or their family for that matter. Often people are very concerned with their family members and that's where their heart is. So do they have a home improvement project with which you could lend a hand. In other words, maybe they're working on something. Maybe they're working in their garden. Uh, Maybe they are making reparations to their home. Maybe they are working on a certain project or something. Whatever it is, can you lend a hand? Can you participate in their life? Is someone in their family ill? Can you do something to help them with that? Can you go to the hospital and visit their brother and their mother with them or whatever the case? And perhaps you could uh, take dinner to them and, and help them out. When maybe someone dies in their family, you can be there to, to aid them and help them by providing for them in their time of grieving. Number four, include them. These three most wanted, include them. Bring them to your small group if you have a home group, which we're structuring right now in our church. We have already a few home groups. And as the doors open up, we'll be able to invite more and more people into those atmospheres. So you bring them into those groups. Find a topic that interests them and draw them into the conversation. Uh, Befriend them. Have ongoing contact with them. Give them a telephone call. Even now and then, just every now and then, I mean, just just give them a call or write them a message or whatever it takes. Ask them out for coffee, catch up with the events of the week. Just be a friend to them out of love. Very important. So these, this is the final notes that we're covering here in this, in this course on permission evangelism. And I want us now to conclude with this. When it is all said and done in the main factor um, uh, that will truly make a difference in this world. It's your ability to befriend and love others. So having seen all that these lessons cover, we realize the same chief principle that Jesus taught us. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So as we live in this world, let's decide to be friendly to those around us. Let his light shine through you into the darkness in which this world lives and you can make the difference between heaven and hell in the ones whom you befriend. So important this is and it is such a priority too for us to consider all these things and I want you to really prayerfully consider who would be on your most wanted list. These are the people that you you can put anyone you want on that list but i I recommend that before you let this day go by, you take a piece of paper or a digital device, however you want to write it down, and put those three people on there and start taking the practical steps. You see, this is the thing about evangelism. Evangelism is practical. It's physical. What do you do to provide some need for the person in order to connect with them so that you might share the faith of Christ with them? How can you do this? It is not a dream state. It is not a a wish list that you're making. You understand? This is not just a prayer list. people, People can make all the prayer lists they want, but faith without works is dead. Our faith and declaration and prayer for these souls is one thing, but we have to cross that line and engage them, overcoming our timidity. All these things we have seen. E I E I O. I dare to share with 
people and declare this. Now, I'm going to move, and I, and I said I would do this. This is kind of an amendment, or better said, an ad hoc thing, something I'm adding to, but yet very much a part of permission evangelism. And I told you, I want us to look at what is referred to as the Romans Road. Romans Road is simply going through the passages of Romans and reading them. See, the book of Romans is a fascinating book. It's a letter written by Paul from a logistical standpoint to those at Rome. Rome at the time was the seat of all education and intelligence and power, and they were the governors of all. They were kind of the, the London or the New York City or the Hong Kong or the Beijing of their day. They were a capital where people were enlightened and educated and they knew many things, and this is where logic was born, logistical thought. And so Paul, very methodically, logistically, in, this pass in these passages of Romans, describes clearly what we need to know, what we need to understand uh, about, about Christ through this road. And so we're going to cover a series of scriptures here. I want to put up a chart to you that shows you the scriptures that we're going to be covering. And this is the Romans road. We're going to see Romans chapter 3, verse 10, that says everyone has sinned. We're going to see Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that we fall short of God's holiness. We're going to see Romans 5, 8, God loves us and sent Jesus. We're going to see Romans 6, 23, we deserve death, but are offered life in Christ, very simply. And then Romans 10, 9, and 10. Do you believe in what Jesus did on the cross, and are you ready to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? So then Romans 10, 13, we're part of God's family. So this, this passage of Scripture, of course, there's different versions of the Romans Road, but this is the version I want to use with you today. So I want to start now considering, and by the way, I recommend... These verses that are written here, in, from top all the way down to the bottom, I recommend you memorize these passages. And I'm going to show those passages to you specifically in the scriptures as well. But as we do, let's, let's go now to Romans chapter 3. And we're going to isolate verse 10 in a moment. But before we do so, I want to read verses 10 all the way through verse 17 because in context... We will then memorize these scriptures so that we might know them. Romans 10, 3.10 says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we see this in context, and remember now we are looking at chapter 3, specifically singling out verse 10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. So this is the part you simply memorize. Be able to say, Romans 3 and verse 10 says, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Everybody has sinned. See, this is your first talking point. This is the moment you're engaging specifically in the gospel. So here you are with your, your friend Dan, and you have prayed for him, he's on your three most wanted list, and you feel that it's time for you to start talking to him. Say, Dan, I'd like to talk to you about really something dear to my heart and, and about our relationship with God. I want you to understand, before anything else, I have no judgment of you, but I want you to know that everybody has sinned. Because a lot of times, some, this, is, this is what I'm really, what I'm trying to say here is you're gonna find when you talk to people about Jesus, one, or about spiritual matters, one of the first things they say, well, I think I'm a pretty good guy. I think I, I do, you know, I do the best I can. Me and God, we have this thing, and I'm doing the best I can, and I think I'm pretty good. Well, they need to understand there is no one righteous. So you can respond at that time with this first key foundational truth 
about what we need to express to people. Everyone has sinned. Dan, you see in Romans 3.10, it says, it is written, no one is righteous, not even one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's where you come to the next passage of Scripture here in Romans 3. And I'm going to read it in context before we go on to the isolated passage. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's the passage you need to memorize. So you need to memorize there is none righteous, there's no one righteous, not even one, Romans 3.10, and then Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's where you go back to describing to your friend here, look Dan, we fall short. Uh, I know you might think I'm a pretty good guy and uh, you know me because I go to church and and I'm talking to you about God, but man, I am the chief of Sinners, all of us, will never measure up to the greatness of God. Everyone has sinned. And secondly here, Dan, we fall short of God's holiness. We can't do it. I don't care how good you are. I don't care. Remember, we, we, we learned this too, that before someone can get saved, you have to get them lost. They need to understand these scriptures. And so you tell them, you know, you can spend your whole life uh, rescuing kittens out of trees and carrying children out of a burning orphanage and giving your whole life over to everything. It cannot. Those deeds themselves, no matter how good you are, I know you think there's a system of scale balances where if you do enough good, it outweighs the bad. But the fact is you could never do enough good to outweigh the bad that has come to us because of sin. From Adam and Eve until now, we are all hardwired to sin. We're stained, Dan. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you're telling them specifically, we fall short. However, and this is then we go to um, show them in Romans chapter 5, and I want to read in context first, where it says there, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Do you understand this? You're asking. God loves us and sent Jesus, we're telling Him in that passage. And the one that you desperately want to memorize is this passage where it says God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us and then that's the Romans 5 8 you want to memorize that and of course you know a lot of other scriptures when you say this you can say you know God so loved the world he sent his own son Jesus that if you believe in him that you will not perish but you have everlasting life because God demonstrates his love for us and while we're still sinners in our darkness, and we know we saw in Romans chapter 3 on down, is we're, you can tell them because by then you have it memorized, right? So you say, man, Romans 3.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. In verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the good news in Romans 5.8 is God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Dan, or whoever you're talking to, and you're making here a clear declaration of these values that we find in Romans, in the Romans road. And as I say, it's important that you also memorize them. So now we see these, everyone has sinned, we fall short of God's holiness, God loves us and sent Jesus. Then you go to Romans chapter 6. Now you're saying, can I use my Bible to do this? You could, you could use your Bible. If they're open enough and you have a Bible or your handphone, have your Bible app in your handphone or your cellular device or your iPad or whatever, and, and access those, those 
individual places in the scripture and show it to them. Maybe have some bookmarks in there. In chapter 3, you have two passages. Chapter 5, you have one. Chapter 6, you have this passage in 623 where it talks about the fact that we deserve death but are offered life in Christ. I like that whole context there where it says, starting in verse 19, I'm using an example for everyday life because of your human limitations, just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness. So now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For, here's our key verse, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that is the passage here that you see verse 23 of Romans chapter 6. It very specifically states the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The price to pay, the only way that we can pay this price would be for us to die. But if someone died for us, then, and this is not talking about a temporal death, this is an eternal death, but if Jesus died for us so that we could be free. And you're explaining this to him. We deserve death, but are offered life in Christ. At this point, you've worked your way through chapter 3, verse 10, chapter 3, verse 23, chapter 5, verse 8, chapter 6, verse 23. Everyone is sin, all sh fall short of the glory of God or His holiness. God loves us and sent His Son, Jesus. We deserve death, but are offered life in Christ. But do you believe in what Jesus did on the cross? And are you ready to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? So you can read to them, this is from Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, Dan. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in Him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is the passage that you want definitely to make. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Dan, do you believe in your heart? All the story I've told you, and whoever your person is you're talking to, do you believe what I've told you about Jesus? And then at that end, they may say, yeah, I believe that. Well then, will you confess and declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord? As you believe in your heart? Well, yeah, I think I can do that. Well, do it. Tell me. Do you believe it? Tell me. Yeah, I believe it. See, when they do that, if you can force that moment, it's with their heart that they believe and are justified like Abraham, and it's with their mouth that they profess their faith, that is their believing what you said, and that is salvation. Salvation comes at that moment. And believe me, if you get them to declare this, they will feel a rush of energy that is indeed salvation. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can tell them that. And that's number, the last one, Romans 10, 13. We are part of God's family. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Dan, now that you've called on the name of the Lord, you are saved. Welcome. See, at that time, I actually reached my hand out and shake their hand and give them a welcome handshake. Man, that's it. And there it is, the Romans road. Let's review. And these are the scriptures you need to memorize. Everyone has sinned, Romans 3.10. Romans 3.23, we fall short of God's holiness. Romans 5.8, God loves us and sent Jesus. Romans 6.23, we deserve death but are offered life in Christ. 
uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Do you believe in your heart or what Jesus did on the cross? And are you ready to ask, confess with your mouth for Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? They may say yes, and if they do, then they're saved, and you can declare to them you're part of God's family. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, there's another way to do this. You can simply take them to the book of Romans and read the whole book to them. That's kind of a long thing to do. But as you do this, now that's what I recommend. You need to go back and look at all these scriptures that we've been covering, and I'll review them from the very first one. We go back here to Romans 3.23, and um, that one, memorize this, Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Memorize Romans 5.8, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Memorize Romans 6. 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then finally, you um, get them to say this. If you declare, Romans 10, 9 and 10, memorize this one. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And finally, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10, 13. So those are the passages, and I want you to take careful note of this chart and make sure that you memorize these. And if you, if you can do this very quickly, it's not hard to do, just take this, take, a, take either, you can take a screen capture of this, and you can use it as your guide. You can go through and, and, do, and do all the, the scriptures consolidated together in a list and put them on a sheet of paper. Memorize. Whatever memorization technique you use, just make sure that you memorize them. If you just memorize the numbers, then you can just use your Bible and open it and read it to them. Romans 3.10, Romans 3.23, Romans 5.8, Romans 6.23, Romans 10.9 and 10, Romans 10.13. Just Memorize it. That's the Romans road that leads us out of darkness into light. The minimum you can do. Of course, the more scriptures you know, the more that you can speak those scriptures from your heart, that will engender a feeling of confidence and authority to the person that you know what you're talking about. And make sure that you intermingle this also with your personal experiences. So that's it. That was our short lesson for today. That summarizes everything. That is the complete course on permission evangelism. Coming up soon as we are allowed and opportunities arise, I want to organize specifically some outreaches. I would love to have some picnics, some beach feasts where we go and have a banquet, a picnic on the beach and invite our friends and there we can interact and share with people in that moment, actually, you can sit next to someone. Imagine sitting next to someone on the beach, enjoying your fried chicken or your barbecue ribs or, or your bihun or whatever we eat, our durian, have a feast out there. And in that moment with music playing, you sit with them and you walk them through the Romans road. Won't that be wonderful? And they come to know Christ in that moment. At our outreaches, I want to have Christmas parties where we can do that. Different fellowships in your home, sitting on the couch with someone while the others are all talking to each other. You can one-on-one -on -one invite one of the people on your three most wanted list and share these things with it. Come on, let's just go get souls. Let's just go. Let's pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send us forth into the harvest field. I want to see our church grow. I want to see your church grow. I want to see Antioch, Center for the Nations, filled with people. God is affording us some amazing opportunities and opening, opening some incredible doors for us these days. And I want you to work with me so that we can harvest the souls of our nations. God bless you and thank you for spending this time with me in this course, covering all that we're covering. And I look forward to bringing you more teachings as we move on. But that's it for now. God bless you and remember to obtain permission. This has been our course on permission evangelism.